Hi everybody! So, I know I normally have my pottery stuff in the background, but I had to do my lustering, and I usually do my lustering at the table because it requires a whole bunch of different supplies. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I'm just going to be talking about the different tools that I use for lustering and why. Um, if you would like like a lustering tutorial, let me know in the comments and I'll add it to my video making list. But otherwise, um, I'm just going to kind of go over the tools that I use and why I prefer them. Just stuff that I've learned with doing lusters for like the last year. And I'll go over tools that are necessary and just tools that... I found I really like using or are really helpful with doing uh, the luster and putting the gold and the silver and all of that on your piece. So first, absolutely foremost, if you're lustering, you really should have a face mask. The chemicals and the lusters and stuff are not safe to breathe in and so there's actually a lot of protective gear that you need to even just get started with the lusters. So uh, one of them is a face mask. So in my last video, I talked about how you need a face mask if you're going to be doing sanding and stuff. So you need uh, particle filters, um, which kind of limit the amount of clay dust and stuff that you're uh, breathing in and can, you know, just help keep you safe while you're doing the sanding. This, however, is, um, it's got different filters on it. Um, I think these were actually like the filters in the last video. Anyways, these filters are actually the filters that you need and I will definitely link them below. They will help filter out all the chemicals and stuff that are found in the lusters. I do also recommend doing it um, outside or in a place that has a lot of fresh air and stuff to kind of help with that. Um, it does start to smell. Usually if I'm doing a little bit here and there it's not too bad but when I sit down and do my dragon egg mugs I usually have to do it in like two hour increments just to make myself safe so I'm not smelling it. And then I do want to mention that I do not have a ventilated area right now just because again, I'm in the northern climates. It is very, very cold. So unfortunately, I don't get a lot of um, cross breeze or outside air and stuff while I'm doing it, um, which is another reason why I limit the amount of time that I do lustering and kind of just do it in increments and stuff if I'm doing a lot of pieces. This video, I just have a couple little pieces so I won't be doing it. I, it probably won't even take me an hour to luster the pieces that I need to luster. So it should be fine. Um, but do be aware if you notice that you're getting, um, you're starting to feel dizzy or you know you notice yourself just feeling not good that you should probably take a break um, and then maybe take a break even earlier the next time um, just to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe while you're doing the lusters. Um, but this is absolutely a must when you're lustering. Whether or not you do it outside or anything like that, um, you really really should get a face mask with the fil appropriate filters for dealing with the lusters. That you should be using gloves. So I usually get you know non-powdered ones. Um, these unfortunately are powdered so it makes it a little bit harder to work with. You don't really want to get ones with powder because it can ruin the luster or the luster won't take very well. I recommend getting non-powdered. I just didn't have any available. This was kind of all they had. Anyways, gloves and a mask are imperative if you're going to be lustering. They're really, really important to have while you're doing that. Another thing that you need for lusters is you need some paper towels. Again, these lusters are not necessarily safe to get on your skin or to get on your stuff or your clothes. So I tend to use paper towels to absorb extra luster or help wet them down or help clean them off. Um, I find these really come in handy. I also use the paper towels to wipe off the surface of the pieces. and. To start off, you will need some paper towels and some um, alcohol, and the alcohol just helps to clean the surface of the mug to make sure there's no extra dust. Sometimes the pieces or the mugs will get clay dust on them or, you know, get other kinds of debris, so I usually wipe off all of my pieces before I luster with some alcohol, kind of let them air dry, and then we'll get to the actual lustering part. Uh, the next part of this is you really need to make sure you have a container and a brush separate for each luster. So I have 
one for gold, I have one for white gold, and I have one for mother of pearl. And they all have their own brush. This brush is the only brush that is ever used with that particular luster, and the brush is not used for anything else. It's really important that you kind of keep them separate and that you only use that brush for that luster and don't use it for anything else that you would need to do in your studio. So I would recommend marking them so that you can tell which ones are which, you know, which one's for your silver, which one's for your gold, which one's for your mother of pearl, because you really don't want to mix them. It will ruin your lusters. So this one is for my gold. And I don't have a label on it. You probably should label them. I probably should label mine. Um, but I kind of remember by the color that they're stained from doing lusters. So I know that red, this red one, is my gold. I know that the lusters that I use for gold are red. And so I know that this brush is for my gold. The same with the container. Um, but it's probably easier if you label them. <laughs> so this one is for my white gold or aka silver and so as you can see it's green my white gold luster is green so I know that this is that brush for this and then this one is my mother of pearl honestly I have still yet to figure out mother of pearl and to get it to turn out really well so that's probably one of the things I'm gonna be working on this year and you can tell the brush is bigger um, mother of pearl is usually put on in larger areas and that is why I have a bigger brush for that I will mention that these brushes have synthetic fibers. Um, they're not natural, uh, but that I am looking into trying natural hair fibers because I noticed that my lusters are actually eating away at my brushes and my brushes aren't really lasting very long and they're kind of getting harder and harder to use every single time I bring my lusters out. My lusters are, are not nice <laughs> to my brushes, uh, but I haven't actually tried them so I don't necessarily want to recommend them to you guys. All I know the brushes that I am using with synthetic fibers are starting to break down and not lasting very long but it might just be the case of that just being the way it is with lusters and that you're just going to end up going through more brushes when you're doing lusters but I can't say for sure. Alright so let's go over the lusters. So what I usually use is I use an essence. So I have this one. I think Duncan recently changed their formula for the essence it tends to be a little bit of a darker red color compared to um, what I've gotten in the past which is clear you do need something to clean your blushes out with and essence is the thing that Duncan sells in order to be able to clean your brushes out with I have also used just natural lavender oils kind of go back and forth between them I pre definitely prefer the smell to the lavender oils over the essence um, and I haven't really noticed too big of a difference with how they clean the brushes and stuff and I haven't noticed too big of a difference with how my lusters are being applied with which cleaning solution I use but you will need a cleaning solution of some type um, and if you just want to go with what Duncan sells then it's called essence um, or you could try your hand at some lavender oil it is probably cheaper than the essences so this hasn't been opened but usually once I open it it goes in a little baggie um, sometimes even before I open them they all have their own little baggies. Sometimes they do spill, sometimes you forget to put the lid on right, or even if you do put the lid on right, I have had containers leak a little bit here and there. Um, so in order to kind of keep the area safe where I'm storing them and things like that and not have to worry about having to clean them. Um, so I do put them in the baggies to kind of protect lusters and as well as protecting the things that they might leak onto or around. So I use uh, Duncan Lusters. So that's the brand that I use. They're really kind of considered stable place to get your lusters so I do have a uh, premium gold gold and the white gold and things like that um, come in little containers like this little two ounce containers um, I will also say that these are pretty much the most expensive material I use in my studio um, this little two ounce bottle of gold uh, cost me about 50 bucks or more so that is something to keep in mind if you decide to get into lustering it is a little bit expensive uh, make sure that you price your stuff accordingly because it is real gold and <laughs> so um, yeah just keep it in mind um, if you're doing mother of pearl that probably would be the best place to start because it is a you get quite a bit more you can see for not nearly as much money so this one only cost me about I think 
like six, seven dollars for quite a bit more of the Mother of Pearl. Um, so it's kind of a cheaper option if you're looking to just kind of dabble in lusters to see if you like them or not. It also doesn't show up as much. You won't notice as big of a difference with the Mother of Pearl as you will with the other colors. Um, it kind of just adds like a rainbow sheen to the outside of whatever you've put it on. Um, it does, these do last a long time. It's not like you can only use it once and that's it. You can usually put it on a couple of pieces depending on how much you use. So they do cover quite a bit of surface area, but like I said, they are really expensive, 30 to 40 and then like 50 up. Um, so do keep that in mind when you're pricing your mugs, if you're trying to sell your work and stuff, include, make sure to include that in the price uh, of selling the piece.